Hey guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back, welcome back. Shall we finish up this Mama Jamma? What I did off camera was I went ahead and threaded the posts and the bolts through the cover and punched holes in the straps with this thing, my crocodile. What I had to do for attaching, however, I carefully detached the front flap on this accordion envelope so that I could peel it back and add my bolts. So full disclosure. <laughs> I don't remember what I was going to do. For some reason, I didn't find it problematic to go ahead and close this up, which was short-sighted on my part, <laughs> but lesson learned. Lesson learned. So I had made for this book cover, this round, it looks like a porthole frame, doesn't it? And it's just chipboard cut in a circle. And I took some, I think I painted it black first, and then I took some gold paint and dry brushed it. All I did. And I punched holes with, again, with this thing. Just, I don't even think I measured. I just evenly spaced them around. So I still want to use this because I made it for this book and it fits this book. So what I thought would be, I don't know, what would make sense is to make the front cover kind of look like a large specimen slide of sorts. What I did was I took a piece of heavy cardstock that's the same or a little smaller than the circle. And I glued on some distressed fabric. That's all I did. And I, you can tell I just kind of cut around, just barely bigger, and then I glued that around. That's in there. And this, I, you know, I was gonna close it up, and then I thought, mm, I wanna be able to open it, because <laughs> I'm a brat like that. So, I want this to have some kind of a window in it, and I have, this transparency film, but I thought, man, that's flimsy, flimsy, flimsy. So in looking around my studio, I came across this packet of brushes, and I think it's quite a bit thicker, the plastic, than the transparency film. It feels thicker, like about twice as thick. So I was thinking about using this instead. If I had plexiglass, I would use plexiglass Alas, I do not. I'm just trying to find kind of one of the clearest spots because I'm unpredictably picky about some things and not about others. So it's going to fit underneath this frame. That is the plan as of right this moment. I also wanted a little hook and latch, maybe, well, I wanted a closure of some kind, but I had these hook and latch closures because I wanna be able to open said door when I want to. I also have some little tiny hinges, and I think I will use some brads to complete the process of making it functional. And I may go ahead and glue this down and then cut around it because I'll probably get a better cut that way. And because PVA is not the best to use with acetate or plastic, I'm gonna use the Fabra whatever. I'm gonna give this a few moments to finish drying before I mess with it. Cause I'll just end up moving it and smearing glue all over the place. Now, because this frame has some thickness to it, when it lays on the top of the book, if I put one hook closure up on the top of the frame and then the other one goes down here, this will be higher because of the thickness of this. So what I did was I filled up the negative space in the back in the cavity 
zoomy zoomy in a little bit, maybe this will help. I just glued some chipboard in there to fill up that negative space. And I took some brads. This was an experiment and that's why I didn't film this part. I wasn't even thinking about it. I was just messing around, but it worked. So I'm gonna use it because I don't have a bunch of these. So after I glued all this inside this negative space underneath, I took some brads and I cut the legs off except for just a tiny little bit. And then I took my awl and I made a hole in that chipboard and I used glossy accents because this is metal. And I just put a dot of glossy accents and then I shoved the brad down into that chipboard so that it looks like it's got at least some little rivets or something holding it in. And then to make it more the height of what this is going to be, I cut a piece of chipboard to be like, you know, like a plate that goes underneath a, a doorknob, kind of like a base plate, just to raise it up a little bit. So I will go ahead and glue that together because I'm not going to be putting holes in the cover to rivet this to the inside. I don't think it's gonna need it because all it's doing is holding closed this little door it's not holding the book cover closed or anything. So I don't think it will be necessary to go that far and put more holes in everything. I think it's on there somewhat centered, somewhat. So we will just leave that alone and stop mucking around with it so we don't uncenter that. And this feels dry. Ahead and trim around the edge. And as far as attaching this, I probably will put brads through to the back side to hold that in. And then I cut a piece of just some cardstock, and I thought. I could just make a smaller circle, which hindsight, I should have drawn the, you know, you know, I should, yeah, you know, you know what I should have done. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And circles are hard. Circle, cutting circles are, it's hard. <laughs> I have a, where is my pen? Well, I can't find the pen I want. You know how you just have, you just touched it, you just used it, and you set it down, and I swear somebody comes along behind me and grabs stuff and puts it elsewhere. I'm like, are you kidding me? Okay, my point was, circles are hard. And I have one of the, these things, the We Are Memory Keepers. Oops, the blades are broken, it came that way. The there's little blades that you stick into these little slots on top and you put your material under here and you're supposed to secure it with these little teeth. So it couldn't, it couldn't just be a circle in the middle because it will, it will move around unless it is secured with these little, they're like little vampire teeth. Those are totally, those are little, little snake teeth, little vampire teeth, or kitten teeth, or puppy, puppy needles. Then you put the little blade in there, and then you use this to turn it, and it cuts it. It comes with two blades. One of them was already snapped off one of the feet that holds it into these. Then I find that unless I'm cutting something out of a larger piece of stock, that can be secured over here and this ruins it because this, you know, these poke through it to hold it down. I don't know, I just don't think, I this ended up not being very efficient. It worked for a few things, but honestly, it just wasn't what I thought it was gonna be, I guess. So I'd rather turn on the cricket or something if I had to and, because then it would cut a circle and then a circle out of the middle. I'm sorry, we are memory keepers. I am not, I'm not a fan of your circle cutter. I'm sure it works well in some situations, just not anything I need to do. I should have had my Cricut do this. 
That'll do, pig. One little spot and we'll be good to go. Because I wanted some brads to go through this edge, I thought perhaps I could go ahead and, oh, one more spot. Now let's hope I have enough brads. I'm starting to run low on these. I need to get some more, I think. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like some pilot holes. Put these through those pilot holes. Here is the latch. Let's see if we can go ahead and put this on as well. I'm going to put some glue underneath. I'm going to add some glossy accents, just a drip where those brads are going to go through, just for some extra security. Let's hope that stays. So for the hinge, I'm going to find the way that it closes all the way up and not stops at a 45 degree angle because we need it to close all the way down. And on this opposite side, I'm going to glue this down with some glossy accents and then I'll be able to put this over the top of it to seal it in. Does that sound feasible? Clips to hold those. Ooh, that's way too much. These toothpicks. Five times more than I need. I'm just going to place the hinge opposite the latch. Let's hope that works. All right, now that needs to dry for a moment and hopefully we won't dry the hinge closed. I've done that before. Okay, we're going to go with that. That'll just have to do. The other thing that we talked about was the fact that I wanted to put a latch above this uh, folder that would have a magnet in it. And so I took some of that canvas that I had and I just folded it over with a magnet on the inside. And what I thought I would do, attach it so that it's comfortably attached. And then wherever it is that I want the little door to close, then this will fold around and glue to the back side over here. That makes some kind of sense. So that's going to close like this and I'll close that down and that should be the correct place. Should be being the operative word there. I think I will use the Fabro whatever. And I'm not just going to glue it down on this side facing up, but also this side that along this side. Glue that up and over. And I got to leave that alone again for everything I touch. I have to glue it and then leave it alone. Hopefully I have enough things lined up to where we won't be waiting for all the glue to dry. So there is this all closed up and scoop this other camera back or perhaps that's a better angle. Oh, we turn off the furnace. We turn off the submarine. All right. So I guess what we could do is work on whatever specimen is going to go inside the circle. I suppose. Got a fern leaf. 
And I've got some moss of different sorts. So perhaps we will have a vignette. I like this side, but we'll have to cut that down because it's too long. And I have this lovely little thing. It could go or turned over, however it works out. And then also I could do some of these, but I'm going to have to start gluing down, aren't I? Okay, I'm going to start gluing stuff. We'll figure it out as we go along. Glue. It'll have to be the fabric or whatever. So first, we'll go down the fern frond. And I think I'll do a little bit of the greenery, the green green underneath and then a little bit more above it, above this lichen dumaflagey. Maybe this should go over here. Now I will put this down. Let's hope this fits underneath that little circle. A little more. All right. Now, do we have any more little labely things? That one. Aha. This is a type of fern. It's most likely not the correct one, but we aren't going to tell anyone. We're just going to pretend like it's the proper one and go with that. And I've got this one because one of them can go on on the window, I'm thinking. And then this one could just be hanging out over here, like it's got a purpose and, and a point. And as long as it, it exudes confidence, nobody's gonna ask what it's supposed to be doing. How are we doing? Just wanna glue this on. Get it done, man. I think I will use the Fabra whatever because it dries faster than the glossy accents, but it holds more than the art glitter glue or PVA or anything like that. And again, I'm going to get some little clamps just to make sure everything is held down. Okay, I think we are glued. I'm calling it. Let's see what this is going to look like. There is, and I may or may not even glue that down. We'll, we'll see what happens. And I'm even thinking about doing a frame, like a base frame on the book cover itself to hold this up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So this will go like this, and then it'll kind of look like that, except without the glare. There will be less glare in real life, and it'll be centered better, hopefully. But I think I like that, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and put a base frame. And what that will allow me to do, I'll make another one of these basically. And what that will allow me to do is I'll be able to attach 
this to it. I'll show you in a minute. I'm not going to explain it now and then explain it again. I'll just, I'll be right back. I put some twine, some burlap twine around the edge. Well, because I thought it kind of looked cool, but also so that, so that nothing will fall out because the hinge will raise up the side a little bit. I wanted everything to hit evenly over, over on this side too. I didn't want one side to be higher than the other. So I put this burlap twine here to kind of just to even that out a little bit. At least that's my story <laughs> sticking to it. Now, my problem is now that the, uh, this little thing, this little guy right here is gonna need some more lift, like an eighth of an inch now that, cause I put the twine underneath. So I gotta put something underneath this. It's a never ending thing, isn't it? This is never ending. This was supposed to be a quick video and it's turning into all day. But what this base plate will allow me to do is I can attach the hinge to the base plate with some brads and some glue. And then that gets glued down to the top and that kind of seals everything in so that it won't move. At least that is, that is the plan. She says confidently. <laughs> so if this goes to the edge, right about there, and that means if I open this up, I can mark some sort of semblance of accuracy here. I'm not going to use the crop dial because I don't want the, the puncture holes to be too large. And again, I need my glossy accents because I will better put that aside. I'm going to muck something up. The glossy accents should allow for this to really hold down pretty well. I'm going to put some under where the hinge will go. I like that. Smoosh that around a little bit. Am I even in camera? You guys seeing that? I left the other camera at my other work table, so I don't have that at the moment. So this needs to go in like this. And this is gonna be really fiddly and messy until, until I get everything kind of situated. Now let's hope that will be adequate. And I'm going to put a keepity keep right there. Keep everybody situated. This should be dry enough. And because I'm lazy and I don't want to get out the black paint, I'm just going to fill in the side with a little bit of a Sharpie marker. I got ink all over my hands. And this should be able to get glued down over here on this side. Okay, now I'll let that dry. This side should be all right. I'll let that dry. Well, 
Unsurprisingly, I have misplaced what I was gonna put on the spine, because that's what I do. Mm -hmm. It was right here. I swear, it was right here. I would like to put this little tag on the window itself. And since there's a sticker and stuff up on this side, here we go, I'll put this down here. Then I'll probably put this down over here on the opposite side. Man, I hope I can find the thing that was going on the spine. I guess I could go print another one. I just, oh. I like to print things when I have a full page to print, not when I just have one little teeny tiny thing. I hate that. I'm gonna put this down over on the side. And I think I will go ahead, as soon as this dries just a little bit more, so I don't dislodge it from, from its spot, I will glue this entire assembly down to the cover of the book. Let's do this thing. I'm gonna close this. I found it. I love this label. Close these up for a moment because it's gotta sit like this. Back the truck up here. I think I want it down here. Well, maybe up a little bit. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on this. I need to get some acetone. Remember we talked about that? Still haven't done it. I did go get my mail, so I gotta open that up. And while I was out, I should have ran by Walgreens or something and grabbed some, nope, I didn't do it. So maybe I will order some because I have a feeling that we're all going to be going down on a, not a lockdown, but they said that the virus is ramping back up. So I'm assuming that there's going to be more restrictions or suggestions or whatever it is. Me being high risk anyway, I, I go out as little as possible. So I try to consolidate all of my errands into as few trips out as humanly possible. Oh, and the cat, it's like three o'clock and she already thinks it's dinner time. So you may be hearing that. All right, so there is, there is the label. This book must not be destroyed. And there is our cover. Kind of cool, I think. Yeah, it kind of looks like a porthole, but um, I'm not, I'm not hating it. And these keep it nice and snug, nice and closed. Open this up. I haven't put this back in it, so I need to put this back in it. So inside here, if you recall, we have tabs and dividers for whatever whatever you are gonna be using your lap book for. If you made one of these accordion em envelopes, I just added a little metal index clip and some other labels. And then of course the tapestry spine that folds out for the Webster's Dictionary. I have to keep moving stuff down because it gets longer and longer. And then this opens up to have our little file folders that are in here. Put one of these in each of them. That. And a few little labels, a map and a specimen label on inside of, of our dictionary. And I've got this label here, scooting back over. Now we have this income receipts envelope with this little tag slide through that has our extra photograph slides for making more specimen slides if we need them. And some labels down in here. And of course this, which I'm gonna glue back down. And this will 
this will go in here after I glue it back down. Close that up. And we have the spine with the specimen bottles that are in the little elastic loops that hold the bottles in with just various things and labels taped on because I'm fancy like that. That scotch tape, that fancy, fancy scotch tape. Over here, before we open up this side, we made these little pockets with the thumb holes and the field labels out of just these merchandise tags that were ready made. We made out of the photo slides. Storage label here that I put on and then I cut through it so that it looks like it was opened later on after it was sealed up. I haven't put anything in this yet. I don't know if I'm gonna put anything in that yet. <laughs> And then this got tied closed with this silk twine. This is it's actually remnants of silk saris, and that's yarn made from that. And this is just a nice big envelope inside of there. And we turn this back, and we've got this canvas coin envelope inside here that opens up. Notebook paper on the clip. And then opening this up, And today I added this little flap here. I don't know, I think it's gonna hold it a lot better than trying to put the magnet underneath. So I did. And then this opens up. I did put a little butterfly specimen plate here with a label down here. Paper clip slides right there and keeps it closed just in case. There's another one of the file folders here. We've got some tweezers and a pocket here with a magnet and a muse another museum sticker. And then in here is the scissors that fold. For easy access. And there's nothing in this one, but there doesn't have to be anything in every pocket, I guess. This folds down and this shuts and that keeps it closed really well. And you remember me putting this one on the front of that book. And then of course on this back page, we've got all of these specimen slides that are inside these pockets that are in, in a row. There's all different, I think there's nine different ones in there. We have our twine in this pocket. Our notebook goes in this pocket. And of course, tags of two different kinds and sizes on there. I think it turned out pretty stinking fabulous. I think there's a lot that could still be done with it. This could even be emptied of all of its contents and then something different, a totally different theme could potentially go in here. And, and that's another reason why I left the little fern collage inside here open and free, just in case I do sell it or I give it away to somebody and it isn't what they wanna do. They can just pop this out and put something different in here. They could put a photograph or a collage of their own. It, it's not gonna go anywhere because that burlap keeps everything in and the acetate and everything keeps everything all secure inside that little porthole. <laughs> and then of course our attachments. And I made three holes so that it could be cinched up kind of tight and then medium and then loose as things get added or taken out. And that, that is that. There is our label on the spine. I think it looks Pretty fabulous. I think there's a lot of room in there and still a lot of room to put more things in it. I haven't put this in. I will glue down that folder and then put that back in there. All right, well, thank all of you for joining me in this process. I hope you had fun. Even if you didn't make anything, I hope you had fun watching it. Maybe it gave you some ideas for later. If you did decide to make a lap book, I hope something that I did 
gave you an idea for your current lap book, whether it was the theme or just some different elements that we built for, for the book, or I hope that it was at least enjoyable for you to watch, even though it took a minute. But these things do. They're not a one day project kind of a thing, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you for making comments and suggestions and different contributions that help me to be better at what I do and to maybe make things a little bit simpler because you know how sometimes I overthink things and I make them more complicated than they need to be. And then somebody in the comments says, well, why didn't you just do this? And I'm like, because I didn't think of it. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you to all of you who have commented and made suggestions. I, I appreciate every single one of you. Without you guys, I wouldn't be able to do this. So a big, huge thank you to all of you. All right. Well, I am going to go get back to work on a project that I'm working on after I edit this last video and get it uploaded so that you guys can watch it. But I will be back and I will see you really, really soon in the next video. Bye guys.